Last night's TWAB revealed some major nerfs and buffs coming to Destiny 2 with Shadowkeep, also giving us a glimpse at all new armours, all in which we will cover today and as always guys, me giving you guys my opinion on all coming changes. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and I'd like to thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out and if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so the entire TWAB, if you want to read through it all, you will find it linked within the video description. It's pretty lengthy, to say the least. Okay, so the TWAB opens up with uh, the announcement of a new Bungie bounty. I mean, if you are lucky enough, I mean super lucky, on Tuesday, September 10th, 3 to 5 p.m. PDT, Phil Spencer and Pete Parsons are playing strikes, leaving one spot open. This will be on Xbox and if you manage to get that third spot over the course of these two hours you you snag yourself this pretty epic looking emblem I mean good luck trying to get this it will be streamed on mixer to up your chances of when to join that strike playlist in search trying to get that third spot but in my opinion you will need a miracle also, if you are watching and participating in the mixer chat there's a chance you'll be able to win the sold out shadow keep collectors edition Edition. Okay, so moving on to PvP director changes as well as the removal of certain PvP maps. We've removed the quick play and competitive nodes from the director. If you're looking for an experience like quick play, we've added classic mix, a connection based playlist like quick play today. Classic mix includes control, clash, and supremacy. Competitive is replaced by 3v3 survival which now rewards glory. We've also added a survival solo queue playlist which also rewards glory. We've added 6v6 control as its own playlist. With the potential influx of new players this fall, we want to have a playlist that signals to new players where to start. We feel like a 6v6 control is the right starting place when introducing new friends to destiny. We've added a weekly 6v6 rotator and a weekly 4v4 rotator. These rotator playlists are where mods like Clash, Supremacy, Mayhem, Lockdown and Countdown will appear. We want to create some variety in the PvP experience from season to season and one way we're doing that is to bench some maps for the season. While they're out of rotation, if time allows, we also hope to improve how they play by tweaking spawn areas and more spawns and overall structure so they return better than before. The first four to be removed from all playlists are Dead Cliffs, Legion's Gulch, Retribution and Solitude. We also made a pass on all playlists, removing some maps from playlists where they don't shine. Equinox is now only in Scorched, Mayhem and Breakthrough and Firebase Echo is only in Supremacy, Mayhem and Breakthrough. While we are removing a few maps, we are also introducing Widow's Court, Twilight Gap and a new map, Fragment. Think Dreaming City meets Infinite Forest. So they are removing a few set maps people. To be honest, looking at these images, I think they're the only damn maps I seem to match into. The fact we are getting back Twilight Gap though and Widow's Core is absolutely epic. I loved both of these maps and a new one called Fragment could be good. Elimination is also making a return to Crucible Labs. I believe here what they are trying to do is create the perfect Trials mode and what better way to test it. Okay so moving on and changes are being made to heavy ammo spawns in 6v6 playlist modes. And this will work a lot like it did in Destiny 1. But instead of having to be within a certain radius, I do believe it spawns for all players on a team that grab the heavy. And you'll have 7 seconds to grab the heavy before it despawns. Changes are also being made to ranks. Glory, Valor and Infamy streaks have been made more resilient. Instead of resetting your streak, losses will now reduce your Valor and Infamy streaks by 1. And your Glory streak by 2. You can still lose glory, but if your rank is at or below Fabled, you can't lose glory. If doing so, it will drop you below that rank. Each rank through Fabled acts as a floor for glory. Competitive matchmaking changes. Destiny has always tracked player skill behind the scenes, taking into account things like kills, damage dealt, and so forth. These factors all contribute to a player skill rating in Season 8 with map skill ratings to glory ranks, with the lowest end of the scale mapping to Guardian 1, and the high end mapping to Legend. Most players are somewhere between these extremes. As you play in the survival playlist, the glory system will accelerate you to the rank that corresponds to your skill rating. 
If your current rank is below where your skill rating says you should be, you'll earn extra glow based on the criteria above, so you can get to your expected rank faster and lose less glory so you don't fall farther away. Once you reach your expected rank, glow gains and losses will normalize. Okay, so we're going to move on to the sandbox changes to abilities, and wow, there were some pretty big changes here for sure. Starting with the Hunter Night Stalker bottom tree. Vanish. Smoke Bomb grants invisibility to allies. Gives one stack of heart at a pack, newly revamped, to all allies hit. Grants plus 32 to armor, recovery and agility. Gives weapon reload speed and handling. Max 3 stacks. Increased invisibility duration from 7 to 8 seconds. Provision. Killing tethered enemies creates orbs and increases agility, armor and recovery for allies. New perk. Old perk benefits move to be part of the Morbius Quiver. Damaging enemies with your grenades reduces the cooldown of your smoke bomb. 6% per damage tick. Making allies in this gives you grenade energy. 17.5% per ally. Morbius Quiver. Fires super multiple times and deals massive damage to tethered targets. Added the old provision perk to naturally be a part of Morbius Quiver. Killing tethered enemies creates super orbs and grants stacks of heart of the pack for allies. Expended the range of heart of the pack from 20 to 30 meters. Shadow shot super, top and bottom tree, damage increased from 150 to 250. One shot kill in PvP, improved tether accuracy near obstacles. Suppresses on hit is more consistent. Yeah, we'll see about that. Well, to be honest, some pretty decent changes stated there, but we will see how it handles in-game. I mean, it looks good on paper, but that isn't always the case of how it actually handles, and as we know. Moving on to Titan Sentinel Top Trick. Defensive Strike, melee ability that creates an overshield for nearby allies. All kills while the overshield is active grant melee energy for the player with the shield. Works for all allies you grant a shield too. Wow, this is based upon enemy threat level. From 5% for minor enemies and 25% for bosses and players, i.e. guardians. Rallying force, melee kills, heal, nearby allies. Heal buffed from 10 health and 10 shields to 10 health and 20 shields, 50% increase. Ward of Dawn, alternate super that creates a shield bubble. Increased ward health versus supers. More supers will require the whole thing to be dumped on the ward to destroy it, but will usually not kill the players inside. War grants weapons of light buff when passing through it. 35% weapon damage for 15 seconds. Wow! Grants an additional super orb. Free. Auto generate orbs now grant the same amount of super energy as regular super orbs. Previously, the orbs had less super energy. They were on par with masterwork orbs. Sentinel, Cold of the Aggressor. Bottom Tree. Shield Bash. Shoulder Charge that disorients nearby enemies. Wow! Now suppresses the target hit and any enemy within 2 meters have to be basically right next to them. Well, that's reassuring. Avoid Walker Attunement of Hunger, Bottom Tree. Vortex, Nova Bomb leaves behind a damaging area of effect pool. Initial explosion damage increased 15%. Lingering damage increased 15%. Dawnblade, Attunement of Grace. Well of Radiance, alternate super that creates a healing buffing field for allies. Grants an additional super orb, free. Auto generated orbs now grant the same amount of super energy as regular super orbs. Previously, the orbs uh, gave less super energy, which were on par with masterwork orbs. Okay, so decent, but now let's check out the nerfs. Night Stalker, where the trapper top. Shadow Shot fires an arrow that damages enemies and debuffs enemies nearby. Damage shown for the Night Stalker player significantly reduced from 100 to 50%. Now all allied players have 50% damage shown on Tether. Wow. Night Stalker Way of the Wraith, middle. Flawless execution, headshot kills while crouch grants invisibility and true sight. Now true sight lasts 3 seconds, down from 9. Wow, that is a nerf. Shattering Strike, after performing a flawless execution, your melee attacks have a longer lunge range and weakens enemies. Advanced Warning, when we made the change to Flawless Execution, this automatically unintentionally nerfed this ability to only last 3 seconds. It was directly tied to the True Sight. We have prepared a fix for the 4.6.1 patch to restore the weaken and lunge range increase to last the entire 9 seconds regardless of True Sight and invisibility status. 
Changes are also being made to abilities and exotics which grant instant reload people, so let's get into it. Titan Rally Barricade. This ability now provides a large increase to reload speed for the duration of the effect. The ability no longer automatically reloads your weapons from reserves. Warlock Rift Well of Radiance. Lunification Boots now provides a large increase to reload for the duration of the Well of Radiance. This exotic no longer automatically reloads your weapons from reserves. Wow! Now I know there's been a little uproar over the past 12 hours due to these changes and yet I kinda understand, but in reality, and the bigger picture here, I understand why these changes are being made along with others which we'll come to in a second, and changes to various supers and so forth which we've already covered. The truth is, all these instant reloading tactics paired with crazy OP supers and instant super regens and so much more means that Destiny 2 is easier than ever the way it is right now, and let's face it, it is that way people. There isn't a single activity within the game which is a struggle. Everything is simple, every activity as a method of completing sedativity in mere seconds and really, although it's fun to steam through these things and get that loot, in the long run it does kind of take away the enjoyment of activities. The change I feel won't drastically change how easy some things are, but they will, as I believe intended, make people more so think about said loadouts. They're also nerfing super regeneration. New energy granted by super orb. Super orbs have a 50% reduction. Now grant 7.143% of your super. Masterwork orbs, 50% reduction, 2.5% towards your super. Kills, 25% reduction and assist, 25% reduction. Wow. I just hope it doesn't turn out to be how Destiny 2 was at launch. Having like one super per PvP game was just so boring and made it so slow paced. But we will see. So moving on to damage multipliers and this concludes with my point of things getting a little harder going forward. They state, Gold. At Destiny 2 launch, damage buffs were fairly sparse. Uh, there was Empowering Rift for a small increase and you could combine it with a weakening effect such as Hammer Strike but very little else. As time has gone on, we have introduced Well of Radiance, Weapons of Light, Guiding Flame, Frontier Assault, etc. And combining these effects has resulted in player damage output far beyond what was previously available. Even with just a small amount of them, a player can go from 1 times damage to 3 times and beyond, causing there to be an extremely large gap between standard player output and theoretical output. By preventing the larger effects from stacking, we are able to keep each of them around without having to do something in response like raise boss health to compensate for these tactics, as well as create more of them. As an example, Lumina would not have been created in world where the damage bonus effect of Noble Run stacked with other damage effects, and these changes are simply an extension along those same lines. While the weakening effects never stacked, we also took a look at them and adjusted their values as many of our more powerful units would simply evaporate when touched by one of them. But we compensated for that in other ways, such as either extended duration of the effect or in the case of Shadow Shot, making the effect power weapons. Player damage buffs. Player bonuses. Damage bonuses effects uh, that apply to all of a player's weapons simultaneously and no longer stack multiplicatively. Wow, that's a big word. The highest applicable bonus will be used instead. This does not affect single weapon buffs such as Rampage, Kill Clip or exotic weapons that increase their own damage. These will still stack multiplicatively. Buffs that provide bonus damage will still exist simultaneously on the player. So in the event that the one with the highest multiplier wears off, the next highest will be used instead. This change affects the following weapons abilities, Empowering Rift, Frontier Assault, Guardian Flame, Sun Warrior, Inertia Override, Well of Radiance, Lumina Noble Rounds and Weapons of Light. Notable exceptions, Vengeance, One-Eyed Mask, Frontier Assault, bonus damage is now at plus 20, previously plus 25. Some warrior damage bonus is now at plus 20%, previously plus 25. Well of Radiance damage bonus is now at plus 25%, previously 35%. And Weapons of Light damage bonus is now at plus 35%, previously 25%. Enemy debuffs are weakened. Shadow Shot incoming PvE damage is now at plus 30%, previously 35%. Incoming PvP damage is now at 
plus 50%, previously plus 55%, this effect no longer excludes power weapons. Tractor Cannon repulse the force. Incoming PvE damage now uh, plus 30 for all elements, previously plus 33% for non-void and 50% for void damage respectively. And it's the same for PvP, besides incoming PvP damage now at plus 50% for all elements. Hammer Strike, incoming PvE damage is now at plus 30%, previously 50%. Duration increased from 6 to 10 seconds in PvE. Shattering Strike, incoming PvE damage is now at plus 30%, previously 50%. Duration increased from 6 to 10 seconds in PvE. Super damage resistance is also being lowered people, here's what's changing and this also coincides with reports out of packs that 90 RPM snipers can one indeed kill you in your super with a headshot. Super damage resistance removed from masterwork armor. Inherent super damage resistance lowered by category, see below. Okay, so let's get into that. Low, 55 to 49%. Novel Warp, Thunder Crash, Blade Barrage, Novel Warp, and Well of Radiance. Medium, 56% to 51%, Hammer of Soul, and Daybreak, High, 6% to 53%, Fist of Havoc, Burning Maul, Sentinel or Shield, Arc Staff, Arc Lightning, and Shadow Shot, Unchanged, Spectral Blades, Golden Gun, and Chaos Reach. So guys, some massive changes coming to the sandbox, ones that would definitely change the feel of the game and the way most people think about playing this. And to be honest guys, I'm excited for this. I, it's a change I do indeed welcome. But what do you think about all these? Let me know down below in that comment section. Are there any issues you see bubbling in the future here? Let me know down below. Okay, so we're going to move on to Shadow Keep armor sets and exactly what armor will be available when armor 2.0 system comes into effect on October 1st. Okay, so the Shadowkeep armor sets, the Dream Bane armor, this is acquired from activities on the moon and it looks amazing. Now we have seen a lot of these people in like wallpapers and so many other images on Twab and via press kits and so forth, but yeah, it does look absolutely epic. Next up we have the Garden of Salvation raid armor. Now this was obviously previously leaked from PAX, we only got images of the icons and one Titan helmet. I mean, yes, they are reskins, but yes, they do indeed look absolutely incredible with them blue holograms. Substitutional armor set acquired from seasonal activities, free season rank rewards and premium season rank rewards. This indeed looks decent too. Phenotype Plasticity Universal Armor Set acquired from premium season rank rewards. And I mean like, wow, this has got to be the best looking armor I've seen so far. Then we have the Iron Will Armor Set acquired from participating in the Iron Banner. Pretty damn cool people. Empyrean Cartography Universal Armor Set acquired from the Eververse store. This looks pretty good too, not gonna lie. So some seriously amazing looking armor here people, I cannot wait to obtain it. They also go on to state the current armors in game which will be available with Shadowkeep as armor 2.0. Okay, so Crucible Year 1 armor includes Year 1 ornaments. Vanguard Year 1 armor includes Year 1 ornaments. The Black Armory Forge armor. Gambit armor, all of it including Gambit Prime. Menagerie, all the Menagerie armor, meaning the ones you can roll also. Raids, Leviathan, Age of Worlds, Spy of Stars, The Last Wish, Scourge of the Past, and Crown of Sorrow. Destinations, European Dead Zone, Titan, Nessus, Io, Mercury, Mars, Vendor, and Escalation Protocol. Tangled Shore and Dreaming City. There will also be additional world drops that can be found in Legendary Engrams which have been updated to Armor 2.0. So there's a lot of armor to chase. Now the one thing I am still unsure about is what happens if we pull these armors out of our collections that we've already collected. Will they still be Armor 2.0? I mean I'm guessing they will. Have they already confirmed? I know they confirmed it with exotics that you could pull out your vault and it'll be Armor 2.0 but I'm not sure about legendary armor pieces but we will see as time goes on unless they've already mentioned this and you can clear that out for me down below in that comment section people. And guys that is it. Shadowkeep is just around the corner and shaping up to be something amazing in my opinion and I cannot wait. Let me know what you think about this down below in that comment section people. Now, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.